In a river, trout will hold up in the current in a good position to feed. This stationary or neutral behaviour is known as being on station, and trout will favour particular spots in a river, ranging relatively short distances to feed before returning to their original position. This is a perfect example of how a trout feeds in a river environment. This trout sits on station hard against the bank and simply waits for the flow of the stream to provide an endless supply of food. Trout are opportunistic feeders, often looking for aquatic insects like mayflies and caddis below and on the surface, and terrestrials or land-based critters like grasshoppers, beetles and ants that have ended up in the river. Upstream we find another brown feeding happily off the surface midstream. Actively searching for food, the brown comes to the surface and examines anything that might be food. When in position on the opposite bank, Gav offers a grasshopper pattern only to have the fish pass up the meal and return to his lie, to come up seconds later to take a real one off the surface. Encouraged by the fish's feeding behaviour, Gav offered the same fly a second time, only to have it rejected again. This is often a good time to change flies and try something a bit different. And having noticed that the fish had taken a couple of brown beetles and orange and brown coloured leaves, Gav tried an orange spinner or adult mayfly imitation. Yeah. Come in. Because we're doing a lot of walking, you need something that's going to be comfortable and you're not going to get hot and sweaty in. So you need something like this. This is a breathable. This is a, uh, they come in a range of different sizes. This is a thigh wader. So you just slip that on and it has what they call a stocking foot. So you don't get hot and sweaty in this material and it certainly just slips into a boot just like these and uh, you're completely dry and the boot gives you excellent grip and support on the rivers and lakes that you're going to fish. The waders also come in like in a, in a waste model, which if you're going to fish, say, some smaller streams that you might need to cross at times, they're quite handy. Up to your normal size is going to be in your chest wader, where it's going to fish in lakes and rivers and, and deeper waters. So they're all going to be good. Pick out what you need, what's going to suit your fishing, and they're going to work for you. Gav and Roger were targeting these fish with the most common form of fly fishing in a river or stream, and that's upstream dry fly fishing. The technique calls for an upstream cast presenting the fly to trout holding in the current, waiting for the flow to bring food to them. In order to imitate the food trout are feeding on in this environment, the angler must ensure they try to achieve a drag-free drift. This is also known as a dead drift, with little to no movement imparted on the fly by the angler. The only force that should be moving the fly should be the movement of water carrying the fly downstream. Any skating or dragging movement of the fly across the surface will, in most cases, spook the fish and it will head for cover or just shut down its feeding behaviour.
when aquatic nymphs are hatching out into flies on the surface of the water is often the time that they are most vulnerable to predation by trout. And this little brown trout fell for an imitation of just that, an emerging mayfly pattern drifting downstream in the surface film. Everything about trout makes them a fantastic target on fly, from the water they inhabit to the food that they eat and their excellent fighting ability. Quiet, slow pools can be deceptively hard to fish. The calm, clear waters of these pools make fish easier to spot and assist us in achieving a good drift. But these conditions also easily bring an angler undone. For the same reasons we can easily spot fish, they can just as easily see us. And the calm surface demands the most delicate of presentations. Paying attention to the skyline and ensuring that you stay below it and attention to detail on the cast with presentation being the key will draw the best results. Interesting, a few casts where we thought might have been a fish and uh, just working our way back up through the uh, middle of the run there and sure enough there's a good little bubble line. The fish comes out and takes it. So, uh, again, just persistence, just work your way through those areas and. Uh, a bit of luck there's a fish there that wants to wants to eat your fly. Tasmania has a lot to offer and the beautifully marked brown trout of its lakes, rivers and streams are the perfect excuse to head south because if you like fly fishing you'll love Tasmania. Well that brings us to the end of our show, I hope you've enjoyed it. Seeing what Tasmanian rivers really have to offer. They're an outstanding fishery and you've just got to get down there and experience it. I'd be getting on the web, seeing what flights are, look for the uh, spirit of Tasmania and just make sure you get down there, you're going to love it. Now next week we're going to take you somewhere a little different to South America and we're going to fish Chile in Patagonia. An awesome place just to visit but to go fishing there is outstanding. So I look forward to seeing you next week and we'll show you what Chile in Patagonia has to offer.